The church is now called to worship. I read in your hearings, the Psalms 102, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with joyful songs. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, for the Lord is good, and his mercies they endured forever. Amen. Amen. You have the pastor now to pray. Let us stand for the implications. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Dear Lord, most kind and loving Father, we come before your throne of grace, a pleading for the power and presence of your Holy Spirit where we are, Father God. We ask that you would fill us, that you would condescend to your footstool, that you would reside with us here today, that you would fill our hearts to the brim so that there is no room for darkness in us, Father God. Drive it out of us. And Father God, when we go home, we pray that you would remove darkness from our dwellings. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Give us a blessed Sabbath experience. These things we pray in the blessed name of your son, Yeshua, the Messiah, the one we call Jesus Christ. And we say together, Amen. 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 Please be seated. Thank you, Pastor. I'm delighted to welcome you all to this hour of worship, the divine hour. If you are online, we are broadcasting to you from. Ashford, very quiet here, a little bit chilly. We are happy to have you. Please tune in, stay with us. All day we'll be here until the evening hour. For those in the church, if you're coming from Folkestone, let me see your hands, please. One, two, three. You are welcome. We are always happy to have visitors. What about Canterbury. Oh, we are happy to have you. I thought it was a lot more. I know the Margate members, they should be online. So with that, what's left of us is those from Hashford. We are delighted that you always come here faithfully to keep the doors of the church open. And I trust that as you come from week to week, you have been encouraged, you have been inspired. We will not fail to mention our visitors because I have noticed there is a face which I'm not so familiar with. Um, we are happy to have visitors with us all the time. My dear visitor, happy to have you. Uh, would you be so nice to just tell us your name that if we meet you on the street, we can call you by name to say, yes, we are familiar with you. Oh, okay. All right, Rebecca, you are welcome. Make yourself very comfortable. You are in your father's house and um, I trust that your experience today will one that will merit you to want to come back again. So with that in mind, welcome everyone. And I would like to take the opportunity to bless someone who is celebrating their birthday today. I want to bless you with um, acknowledging your birthday and wish you well. Anyone? Anyone online, Brother Andrew? No one born in the month of October? <coughs> Huh? Uh, that's your daughter? Yes, Anna. Okay, Hannah. All right. Okay. Uh, tell her the church send her warm blessings and wish her many, many happy birthdays.
No, I'm getting an indication that someone else is, is who is your sister? Is that you? Eighth of October. Okay, it's coming up. Christian, your birthday is coming up. Come next week and um who? Okay. This Sunday. All right, we wish all the birthday celebrants um, a good week and more many, many beautiful birthdays in this side of life. With that in mind, we want to have a opening hymn as we proceed with our worship service, 294. That's our opening hymn. And immediately after that, we'll have the children's story. Thank you. So let me shift in the heart of service. Thank you. 294. That's a whole thing. into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the lord of hosts if i will not open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it let us pray lord you are so good to us and even though we do not deserve it you bless us anyhow what a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord, for providing for us. Thank you for protecting us and our families, Lord. At this time, I remember those who are less fortunate. I ask that you bless and provide for them too, Lord. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon them, Lord, that there will not be room enough to receive it. I claim that promise in Malachi 3.10 for them now in the name of Jesus. May we be generous with what you have blessed us with, Lord, and may we share and help others along the way. May this money which we have collected go towards doing your work in our district, but also countrywide and indeed worldwide. May others get to know you, your goodness, your mercy and your grace, and may lives be transformed. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Afi sahabat. Okay. But this time we're gonna turn our focus on heavenly things as we get ready for prayer. Okay. Now, dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far away from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound. May our lives be transformed by your love. May our souls be refreshed from above. At this moment, let people everywhere join us now as we come to you God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father, we come to you this afternoon because we know whom we believe in. We know who we trust in, and we can come to you because, Lord, in your presence there is fullness of joy, there is fullness of peace, and Lord God, we can come to you boldly before your throne because, Lord, you have made all provision through your Son Christ Jesus. And Father, we come, God, as sinful beings, knowing that, Lord, what you have the power to save us and to heal. Even at this time, Father, Lord, God, we confess our sins, Lord. I confess my sins, I confess the sins of the church, and I pray that you will wash us and you will make us clean, Lord, so that whatever we pray for right here this afternoon, Lord, that you are going to bless us, that you are going to hear from me a throne of love, and that you are going to open the windows of heaven and just throw us down a blessing, Lord, that you are going to have to open up the continent. Even at this time, Father, oh God, I pray for the waiting condition. Father, I pray, oh God, your blessings upon them. Father, you know each and every heart, each and every cry, oh God. Father, they come here to receive a message. They come here to receive a blessing, Lord. And I pray, oh God, that you will give them a blessing. Father, there are many here who are discouraged. We pray, oh God, that you will break that spirit of discouragement. There are many here who will do financial difficulties. We pray, oh God, that you, oh God, will fill their pocket in my Father. And that, Lord God, you will just provide for all their needs according to your riches and glory. There are some here, oh God, who don't know, oh God, what tomorrow holds for them. But Lord, help them to know that you hold tomorrow. And whatever tomorrow, whatever comes tomorrow, God, is better than what they deserve. And I pray, oh God, that even at this time, Lord, that you would fill your house with your Holy Spirit. Feel that each and every heart here with your presence, Father, because, Lord, Lord, we are your children. And we come here, oh God, because we know you, Father, and we trust you that you can do something for us. But, Father, there are many who couldn't make it this more than one. And Father God, we pray, oh God, your blessing upon them likewise. There are some of our members who are hospitalized, Father. We pray, oh God, that you will visit them at their bed, even at this time, Lord, and you be the comfort, you be the shield, you be the protector, Lord. You be the healer, divine Father, and let them see, oh God, your power in their life. But there are many, oh God, who cannot be here also, Lord, because of whatever reason they may be. But I ask you, God, to comfort them. I ask you, O oh God, to, to build a spirit, O oh God. And I pray, O oh God, that you would just touch them in a very mighty way. Father, we pray for our children because they are the future for tomorrow. We pray, O oh, your blessings upon them. We pray your anointing upon our children, O oh God. And even as we have heard the children's story, we lift up our children, knowing, O oh God, that you, O oh Lord, will save them to the others. I pray, O oh God, also God, for our leaders. The world leaders, Lord, you ask us to pray for them as they make decisions that can affect even the Christian home, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you will give them wisdom from on high, so that they will rule the, um, the world according to your wisdom, according to your glory, oh God. And that you raise king and you bring on king. And we pray for each and every leader worldwide, Lord. 
Even as we are failed this pandemic, Lord, and they are searching for answers, help them to look to you, O God, whom to know is life eternal. And I pray, O God, that even now, Father, you just have to wait. Father, we pray for the speaker, Lord. our pastor, Greg Wilson, Lord. I pray your blessings upon him. I pray that you will fill him with your Holy Spirit and that, Lord, when he preach, O God, will be directly from the throne of God. And that, Lord, will we here who are ready to receive the message, you will prompt us, O God, to live holy life. And that we will do the things that you have commissioned us to do. To go and witness to the world in my Father. Hear our cry, Lord. Whatsoever I fail to answer this morning, fail not to grant it unto us. Fail not to grant it unto the church. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Pen to which we long await. This one got turned off. Thank you. The moment which we long await the preaching of the word. We have a pastor in the house today to serve us with spiritual food as well. The table is well set with the emblems. He will serve us as well. Uh, pastor Greg is no stranger to us. He's fairly new, but he has grown in the hearts of all his members. We have grown to love him. One that is quite humble. One you can approach him. I pray that that grace will remain upon him. But just before Pastor Greg comes to give us his word, I'd like to read. He has a scripture focus here. I'd like just to read it in your hearing. And just before he comes also, we will have a special item by Sister Helen. We have two Helens in this house, but... Um, you will soon know which of the hell. So let me give you the scripture focus that the pastor has for us today. It's in Exodus chapter 12, verses 23, I think it is. Sorry, let me just double check. <clears throat> yes, Exodus 12, 23. That is a scripture focus, and you'll be listening to a sermon entitled The Past Over. The Past Over. Exodus 12, 23. This is our scripture focus for today. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he see the blood upon the lintel, and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door. And he will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto you, in, unto your houses to smite you. We await words from that very encouraging passage. But just before Pastor come, we'll have a special item by Sister Helen. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to speak a bit. Hopefully, you'll hear the sound. Give you all I can today. Scattered ashes that I hid away. I lay them all at your feet. From the corners of my deepest shame, the empty places where I've worn your name. Show me love, say I believe, oh help me to lay sin down, oh Lord I lay it down, oh let this be. 
I don't know how I can follow that. You know, when, when she was singing, it brought back um, memories of my mother passing, my father passing, the trouble with my auntie. Um, I, I tell you, I felt the cry. I, I, I was crying. Um, but it shows that we can still have hope in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of grief. Amen. We can hold on to Christ. All right, so if, if I seem choked up when I'm preaching, uh, that the song did it. Let us pray. <laughs> Dear Lord, most kind and loving Father, come before your throne of grace, asking for help for our time of need. Rescue this message, I pray, Father God, that it may accomplish that which you put. That the words that I speak may be words ushered from your throne of grace. I submit this to you, Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. You say... Amen. Amen. The title of the sermon is called The Passover. And the subject is dealing with our Passover protection. Our Passover protection. And I'm focusing on uh, the, the chapter, Exodus chapter 12. Uh, but it covers, to give you some background of where we're beginning, we're looking at the children of Israel about to be delivered from bondage. And if we follow 
the book of Exodus that we begin to see from chapter 7. Moses is brought back as a deliverer. He's coming to free God's people. He is made a God to Pharaoh. And Aaron, his brother, is his prophet who he sends out before Pharaoh. Throwing down the rod and doing miracles before Pharaoh. And, and we, as we follow the, 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 the story, as we follow the chapters, we begin to see that there are a number of plagues, 10 in fact. and. It begins with the water being turned to blood and, and then the plague of frogs and the plague of lice and flies and, and then the livestock pestilence upon them and, and boils upon the people and the falling of hail with fire and locusts, the plague of locusts and following that plague, a plague of darkness with the locusts, eating everything that was green in the land, leaving nothing that could be used as food. Then there is the darkness, the, the killing, and the final one, the killing of the firstborn. You see, with the plague of darkness, Pharaoh had said, yes, you can go. And Moses was negotiating the terms of, of their leaving. You know, taking the young and the old and and their livestock in order to sacri make sacrifices to God and have a feast um, before the Lord. But with this last plague, the death of the firstborn, the death of the firstborn, it, it was in the middle of the night, as it were, that Pharaoh, having seen the death of his own son and heard the cries of the death of uh, the firstborn throughout his kingdom, throughout Egypt, said in the night, get up and go, take your people with you, leave immediately, leave now. And they, God had prepared them, had prepared them and had given instructions to Moses and Moses instructed the people on the manner in which they must leave and what they must do. And they were to be obedient to these instructions and to trust in God, to have faith in God in order to survive the last plague, the death of the firstborn. Likewise, as we are obedient and trusting of God's will and his work, we too will survive the last plague of earth's history, protected by the Lamb of God. Many of us have experienced the touch of plague over this, these last few months. A plague where even when we have been praying hard, seeking God's protection, it, it seems, it appears that we have not received the full protection of God's power. But we will come to realize in God's plan of salvation, the innocent lamb of God took upon himself our own sins so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In him. The sinful things we do must be put away if we are to live as citizens in God's kingdom. But can we truly live without sinning? Can we truly live without sinning? Some say, yes, it's possible to live a perfect life without sin. But God lets us know that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. David says we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Our very being is sinful. How can we live without sin? Christ himself makes it possible for us to live without sin. You see, he imputes his righteousness to us. Uh, see, not that one of us, any one of us could fulfill the law. Uh, Revelation 5 tells us that 
when they were searching, heaven was searching for someone to be able to open the seven seals. No one, both in heaven and earth, could be found until the Lamb of God came. No one was able, not even, not men nor angels, was able to open up this book. Exodus 12, verse 20, ye shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations, shall ye eat unleavened bread. This is part of the instructions that Moses is giving to the people. Uh, you're not supposed to eat anything with leaven, uh, meaning nothing with yeast in it, nothing that would expand and cause to, to grow, because sin is like leaven and sin corrupts and causes death wherever it goes you shall eat unleavened bread let bread without the yeast you see sin is not meant to be part of our lives for us as christian believers it must be a continual putting away of leaven, a, a continual putting away of the sin. That's part of our life. That's part of our daily walk. It has to be in order for us to be part of the kingdom of God. We must keep this feast in expectation of our final deliverance. The final deliverance coming uh, when we are all laid in the grave, waiting for our Lord and Savior to come that when the trumpet sound is made, Christ will come with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, coming with the clouds, coming with his angels, calling us up. Those who are dead in Christ will be called up from the grave, and those who are alive and remain will be caught up in the air with him. It must be a feast of unleavened bread, kept in charity, kept without the leaven of malice, without the leaven of hatred, without the leaven of pride, in sincerity. You must be sincere. You must be truthful. You must be honest. Without the leaven of hypocrisy. Doing one thing and saying another. The law was very strict as to the Passover, and the Jews were so in their usage that no leaven should be found in their houses. Is there leaven in your house today? You know, in their practice, they would sprinkle this leaven around the place, this yeast around their home, and then they would go out and seek for it, especially the children, go and find the leaven. And when they found the leaven, found the yeast, then they would pile it together and they would burn it, destroy it. We must destroy sin in our homes, wherever it rears its ugly head. All the old leaven of sin must be put far from us with the utmost caution, uh, with hatred for it. Uh, if we would keep the feast of a holy life in honor to Christ. How do we remove leaven from our lives today? Well, we must obey the command to remove the leaven of sin, just like Job. He was a righteous man who eschewed evil, he, meaning he avoided evil. Wherever it reared its head, he turned away from it. He moved away from the presence of evil and prayed for his family, prayed for his children. Secondly, we need to examine ourselves to see if leaven is in us, if sin is in our heart, if it's in our minds, if sin is in our actions and deeds, we must not consume it. We must be careful what we eat, what we read, what we watch, what we listen to, what we touch, we must be careful what we take in through our senses. It reminds me of Christian in Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, he was on his way 
to the celestial city. He had uh, seen evangelists and the evangelists had pointed him the way he must go through the straight gate, you know, go down the narrow way. And as he's going, he's meeting different people along the way. And eventually they are flaking off Mr. Worldly, a wise man and Mr. Doubtful and all of these individuals until he reaches a place, it's called an arbor. You know, a, a place that you could rest. You know, after a long journey, you want to sit down and rest a little while. You know, get some life back into your legs and rest your back. And so Christian rests here. He does not know that he is resting on enchanted ground. And so the sleep comes to him very easily. And it's sweet to, to him. But he is losing time. Brothers and sisters, we are not to stay on enchanted ground, nor to eat those things that will cause us to sleep, the sleep of death, to lose our eternal life, to lose our eternal salvation. We must learn to love the Lamb of God in whom is life eternal. This is our calling as believers. The price of our salvation requires the death of an innocent lamb. An innocent lamb. Here we are taught the hard lesson, there is no forgiveness for God's people without the shedding of blood. A life for a life, it seems. Exodus 12, 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Kill the Passover. A lamb for your house. For each household must have a lamb. Each person represented here today may represent a household and you are to take a lamb. And that lamb must be a male, must be without spot and blemish, must be of a certain age. And you have to look after that lamb for two weeks. It must be in your home. You're going to be looking after that lamb, feeding that lamb, getting to know the lamb. That lamb becomes a friend, a part of the family. But with the instruction comes the fact that you are going to kill it. You are going to take its life in order to preserve your own. And the knife you use must be so sharp that when the life is taken, it is not noticed by the lamp. And it's life giving blood ebbs away. But it is caught in a basin. Not to be wasted, not to be thrown away. Because in that blood is the representation of eternal life. Symbolized in the blood. The Paschal Lamb was a type representing Jesus Christ. Our Passover. Our Passover Lamb. The one whom we must get to know. The one whom we must befriend. It was to be a lamb and Christ the lamb of God. Often in Revelation called the lamb meek and innocent as a lamb dumb before the shearers, before the butchers. It was to be a male of the first year. In its prime, Christ offered up himself in the midst of his days, not in infancy with the babes of Bethlehem, but in strength and sufficiency of the Lord Jesus on whom our help was laid. The Lamb of God gave up his life willingly for you and I. It was to be without blemish, denoting the purity of the Lord Jesus Christ, a lamb without spot, without blemish. The judge that condemned him as 
his trial uh, were only like the scrutiny that was made concerning the sacrifices, whether they were without blemish. No, these who condemned him were not without blemish. Nor did they pronounce him innocent, but they labeled him as a criminal. It was to be set apart for four days before, denoting the designation of the Lord Jesus to be a savior, both in the purpose and in the promise. It is observable that as Christ was crucified at the Passover, so he solemnly entered into Jerusalem four days before. Four days before. The very day the Pascal lamb was to be set apart. It was to be killed by the whole congregation. Between two evenings, that is between the three o'clock and the six. Christ suffered in the end of the world by the hands of the Jews. The whole multitude of them crying, crucify him, crucify him. Let his blood be upon us and our generation and our descendants. But he died not for himself, but for his people and for our good. Spiritual Israel. Not a, not a bone must be broken which is expressly said to be fulfilled in Christ, denoting the unbroken strength of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we may say the unbroken strength of our Lord and Savior, but we noted his agony in the Garden of Gethsemane when he faced the trial set before him. He prayed in agony. Desiring of his disciples to pray with him, but they could not stay the course. The flesh was willing. The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. We must learn the lessons of what it means to love and sacrifice for the good of others. Learning to live with the lamb for two weeks is not an easy thing to do before you take its life. We must learn to love the lamb of God in whom is life eternal. The blood of the innocent lamb will protect God's people in the day of God's wrath. Blood is essential, it is important and the question is, are you numbered with God's people? Exodus 12, 22, and ye shall uh, take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two sides, uh, side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. These emblems were important. It was not enough that the, the blood of the lamb was shed. The blood itself had to be sprinkled. It had to uh, denote the merits of the blood of Christ, of his death and of the saving of our souls. For us, it is atonement, atonement for our sins. It was placed upon the dwelling that they would inhabit. It was sprinkled on the doorpost, denoting the open profession we are to make in faith that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. 
that he is the one who is over us, that he is not only our creator, but our redeemer. And we are under his protection. Hyssop was used. Hyssop, a bush, number of leaves on it, dipped in the blood. Hyssop, a bitter, bitter herb, used for cleansing, especially cleansing the blood. This also symbolized faith and purity and cleansing for the believer. Can you imagine being thrust in that situation where you have received the instructions from Moses on, on what you are to do and uh, how you are to look after the lamb and then take his life and not only that catch his blood and make sure you have the, the, uh, the, the hiss and that your dwelling must be covered. You must put the blood on the doorposts. Because a destroying angel is coming. It's on its way. Time is running out. And if you don't make sure that you have done all of these things, your life will be lost. Your life will be lost. Not only your life, but those who are the firstborn in your family. The ones that are precious to you. You didn't know whether you would be a mother or a father, whether you would bring life into this world. And here is your first offering to the world for that to be taken away from you. Or you may have another one. Or you may not have another one. But this was God's gift to you. And for that life to be taken away, tears something from you. The blood must be sprinkled. The emblems must be used. Protection must be afforded if you are to see another day. The destroying angel was coming through the night, seeking where the blood was not. It was not over the homes of the Egyptians. That blood meant the preservation of the Israelites, of their lives, of their future, of the promise that God promised through Abraham that followed the patriarchs that would eventually lead to a promised land. The blood of Christ atones for our sins. We must apply the merits of his blood in our lives. It was to be put over the home, over our, our place of abode, our temple, if you will, where God would reside. And not only the temple, the place where you reside, but your body as temple. God's blood must be seen upon you, on your heart, your mind, your life. You must learn to love the Lamb of God in whom is life eternal the lord will destroy your enemies when he sees the blood on your doorposts you know many of us when we move into a new place we have our home blessed and we have it blessed for good reason you know <clears throat> because we may experience supernatural occurrences Things that may disrupt the harmony of our home life. We may be afflicted personally. Things may start to move around in the home that no one moved in the home. Then you start to wonder what's going on. What is happening in my home? Is my front door and back door left open? What is happening? I need some kind of protection to protect me from the invisible, the invisible beings that seek to disrupt our lives, that hate us with a passion. The Bible refers to these as fallen angels, unclean spirits. The blood affords protection over our homes. 
over our lives, giving us peace where there is none. Exodus 12, 23, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. This was a destroying angel. An unseen force that would take your life, the life of your firstborn. So who was the enemy of Christ, of the kingdom of God? Those who played their part in killing the lamb, it seems. Who played their part in killing the lamb? Moses and the people were instructed to kill the Passover lamb using its blood for their protection upon the post. Of, the, of their dwellings, <clears throat> they were parked in killing the lamb. The Jewish council, the Sanhedrin, who were seeking to kill the lamb of God, not to be covered by the blood of the lamb, but they were seeking to kill him out of envy, out of pride, out of hatred, out of jealousy. Judas betrays the Lamb of God. Peter denies the Lamb of God. The disciples scatter from the Lamb of God. So how are they covered by the Lamb of God when they are running away, when it seems like they are rejecting the Lamb of God? Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, prepares them for the time that will come upon them so that they may be delivered not only from their enemies, but from the trial that they will face. The Last Supper, the unleavened bread and wine was a preparation for them. Taking Christ knelt down and washed their feet. He prepared the meal. He shared it amongst them. He did all these things so that they might be spiritually clean and praying for them when the hour of temptation came, that they would not be taken by the trial, that they would be able to endure it. And you could see with the disciples when they went their various ways and Peter denied Christ three times, he was mortified in his soul when he realized he heard the cock crow. Two times, and he realized he had denied his Lord when he said he would die for him. And those who had scattered, strike the shepherd, and the sheep will scatter. And they scattered, like many of you would scatter if a bomb went off. If something strange occurred and it shocked you, you would scatter fleeing for your lives. But for them, it seemed like the kingdom was undone. The kingdom was destroyed. The one who they thought would be their earthly ruler and leader died. How could he be the one if he is dead? Pascal Lamb was killed not to be looked upon only, but to be fed upon. We must learn to love the Lamb of God in whom is life eternal. The Passover is an eternal reminder for each of us of the Lord's Passover, what God is prepared to do for each of us, that he is prepared to pass over your sin. He's prepared to pass over all the wrongs that you have done in your life. He's prepared to give you protection. He's prepared to put his blood upon you. He's prepared to cover your dwelling place. He's prepared to protect you. Do you want his protection? That's the question. Do you want his protection? 
Do you want to be covered with the blood of the Lamb? See, we go through this, this ritual, as it were, in order to remind ourselves, not, on, not in the old manner of taking a lamb and raising it and bringing it in our homes and so forth, but in the new way that Christ gave to his disciples you won't understand what I'm doing now, but later you will, what I'm doing for you. So as often as we do this, as often as we take the emblem of the unleavened bread and the wine as his blood, we do this in remembrance of him. And in taking these emblems, we are affording the protection even as the Israelites had done <clears throat> 1,446 years ago to the day that Christ was crucified. 1446 BC and the crucifixion of Christ within the first century AD. And now we today in modern times in 2021, are still reminding ourselves of the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover so that we may afford ourselves the same protection that the children of Israel gained when they were led through the Red Sea. They were all baptized under the cloud, sons and daughters of God children of the kingdom of God. I pray that God will afford you that same freedom that he gave to the children of Israel as we uh, uh, obey him and trust in him so that we can follow in the example that he has laid down before us, the communion. The choice is ours today. The sinful things we do must be given up. The price of our salvation was paid by the Lamb of God. The blood of the Lamb of God will protect God's people in the day of God's wrath. The Lord will destroy your enemies when he sees the blood on your doorposts and lintels. And the Passover is an eternal reminder that God is willing to pass over your sin in order to save you. I pray that God will bless you and keep you as we now prepare our hearts and minds to partake in the communion service. I've given you the background. You understand where it's coming from and why it is important for us to continue to remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless and keep you as you now partake in the communion. Amen. 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 Wonderful reminder that God is still in the saving business and even this day of our Lord, if we avail ourselves under the blood, we will receive protection. <laughs> in the service, we normally have the foot washing service, very important. And Jesus is the one who institute that. But because of the circumstances now that prevail, um, this coronavirus and social distancing and all those things. What we'll do this day is that just family will serve each other in the foot washing. But if you're single and you don't have a family to assist in the foot washing, if you are a male, myself and pastor will assist with that and pastor Brother Herman, the deacons, 
Uh, the ladies can go to, or the families can go towards the rear room, and the male, our family, we can go over into that little room. So, if your family and you want to take part in the food washing, a group together, and you will receive basins and water for that. And if you are an individual and you want to wash your feet, uh, you're a male, then I'll assist along with pastor. And um, if you are female and you are single, you don't have family, then I think the deaconesses will help. Sister Sandra, Sister Tendai, and Sister Dorothy, I should think. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we'll have some music now while we transition and we get our feet washed, those who want to wash your feet, and then we'll come back to the having the bread and the wine. Thank you. Uh, I just want to welcome you to um, this uh, second part of our service. I hope you can hear me properly. I'm going to be taking this off shortly, but um, I just want to welcome you to this communion service. And I want to do the first reading, but um, before I do that, I, I want to acknowledge uh, Stuart and his wife, Gwen, and, and your friend. We appreciate your presence here with us. Um, you know, I pray that uh, each of you will receive a blessing from being a partaker of this program. Um, we've gone through the message that we had earlier. And I pray that uh, you would have received the message that God has for you. That message to cleanse you, to, to heal you, to restore you, to be covered with the blood of the Lamb and to receive the emblem, especially of the unleavened bread representing his broken body. I want to read for you from verses 28. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the ordinance of humility. We thank you for the blessing of the sacrifice of your son in the emblems and the sacraments that we have before us. We pray that as we receive them, we would receive the blessing that you bestowed upon the children of Israel to deliver them from captivity, Amen. that we might be delivered from sin also. These things we pray in the blessed name of Yeshua the Messiah, the one we call Jesus Christ. We say, Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now you notice I washed my hands three times. You know, so you could be certain that my hands are clean. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. <laughs> Some of you may get larger pieces than others, okay? So we will have, now have the first reading for the bread. Reading from 1st Corinthians chapter 11, 23 and 24. <clears throat> for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. We're going to have the first prayer. I pray. <clears throat> Your help, O oh God, in ages past, you are holy hope for years to come. We are at the table now to partake in that which you have inspired. You said, often as we do it, we show that we recognize and we appreciate your death and Calvary's cross. May as we partake, it bring strength to our body and spiritual discernment. Bless this service today in a mock way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, so, um, we are also um, sending around the, um, the little sachets that have the bread and the wine with it. But they're combined in one, so there is a, a wafer that is part of it. And so you, there are two layers. You peel the first one off to have the, the first wafer, and then the second layer is for the wine. <laughs>
Has everyone been served? Yes. I saw it. Christ said, this is my body, which was broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Now we have the uh, serving <coughs> for the wine. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 right. The first reading, the second reading. After the same manner, also he took the cup mm -hmm. when he had a supper, saying, This is cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do I, as a, we drink it, remember of me. For as often we eat this bread and drink this cup, we shall we will see the Lord that till he comes. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for this wonderful day, what we can gather together at your feet. Thank you for reminding us your death. And as well, thank you for reminding us for this resurrection. Father, as we drinking and we eating these symbols, make us to refresh our mind and think about yourself and ourselves, what we've done, and put our life in order. Father, as we look into drink a cup of symbolizing your blood, we ask you to bless it and to be with us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
We're just waiting for some more one. Has everyone been served? Are you sure? <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Christ said, This is my blood of the new covenant which was shared for you. Drink ye all of it.
Amen. <clears throat> I can take this off too. Yes. <laughs> okay. uh, I hope and pray that um, that you have enjoyed this service, mm -hmm. that you've gained a blessing from it. You know, the, the <clears throat> one of the key things that we need to do when we are partakers of the service is to confess our sins. And, um, you know, the Bible says, for, for this reason, many are weakened. So if, if, we, if we take the emblems without having confessed, without having examined our lives, then there is this consequence that the Bible talks about. Um, when it came to uh, the children of Israel on the Day of Atonement, if they had not examined themselves, if they had not afflicted their souls, they would be cut off from the assembly, meaning they would die. You know, God is so gracious that today he weakens us. He doesn't cut us off. Um, he doesn't kill us like that. Um, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ still is, is there pleading for us. And so I, I urge any of you, you know, being partakers of this service, please make sure that you look into your lives and is there anything outstanding and you confess that to the lord it's a wonderful service um when we looked at the the symbol the symbolism we we looked at the passover you know in the message we covered the passover and what what they had to do kill the lamb um take the blood put it on their doorpost um roast the uh, the lamb um and they took that with unleavened bread and the body and the, and the, the blood and, and the bread were important to their salvation you know, with each of us these emblems of the body of christ and the blood of christ are important to our salvation but there are other examples like the blood of isaac um, uh, um, well, Isaac, who was offered as a sacrifice, but the blood of Abel, which was spilled by his brother Cain, and um, the New Testament talks about the sacrifice of Christ speaking better things than the blood of Abel, an innocent victim, uh, and then Christ being crucified on the cross. And then the bread itself <clears throat> was also a symbol, really, of the removal of wickedness. And we saw an example of the removal of wickedness in, in the very beginning, you know, when uh, it came down to the flood and Moses and his family were saved in the flood, but the wicked were lost. They were kept safe in the ark of safety. And, you know, the bread is a symbol of the removal of wickedness of those who are saved in the ark and those who are lost in the flood waters. And then we have, um, the baptism of Jesus Christ. Once again, a symbol 
of the removal of sin and wickedness. And he fulfilled all righteousness for, for us in himself being baptized. But when we are following his example, even with the foot washing, it becomes a mini atonement, if you will, a mini baptism, Amen. as some like to refer to it. And so I pray that as you have gone through this, um, uh, the communion service, that you would be blessed in your life, that you would be posted with the blood of the Lamb on your heart and your mind and your soul, and that your homes would be blessed as well. Amen. 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 Now is the time for testimonies. So we have a short uh, testimonies um, before we close with our final prayers. But I also, um, also want to give you the opportunity but we, we normally, at the end of these services, we collect a donation. Um, it's called the Good Samaritan Fund, so that we can help people um, who are in need. And if you are so moved uh, and you wish to donate and to, to help uh, someone else who is in need, someone else who needs to be covered with the blood of the Lamb, then I pray that you would also indicate that you would like to, to give something and uh, the, Deaconesses will collect your donation. Um, but now, uh, if there are any testimonies, does anyone have a testimony they'd like to share? How good God has been to them, what He has done for them. All right. Uh, I think we have one. Yes, we have another one. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you for that, sister. Is there anyone else? Hey. Oh, thank you. I have an issue with the approach to the board. I did not want that situation in my face. The God has stepped in and it's Amen. 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 <clears throat> you know, um, as you gaze upon me with your lovely eyes, with a smile on your face, you are witnessing a miracle right here now, right? The fact that I'm able to be here today, I, met, I was able to get some fuel. <laughs> you know, since I had to travel a great distance to be here today. And, um, you know, in this crisis, these are times when our faith is tested. And when we lean upon God, uh, and we, we've seen um, some of the scenes that have occurred on the petrol forecourt, you know, some people bringing up their fists and struggling, you know, uh, it almost reminds us of the great controversy between good and evil, you know, trying to get their portion of fuel. And um, I hope and pray that as Christians, as servants of the living God, that we remain dignified as, as we go to get our fuel, amen? amen, but as we queue up in those long queues sometimes, you know, it seems people haven't got the message yet that um, all right, we need to calm down, there's enough fuel for everyone, you know, and, and take our time, and, and so, um, I mean, I want to have a banner on my car and say, look, I really need the fuel, I have to, I have to travel break this, you know, um, but I imagine no one would listen to me, and so I have to pray to God. So that he might hear my petition and open up a way. And, and I pray the same for each of us today, that God will bless us even in our travels and with our motor vehicles and acquiring enough fuel for our various journeys and for our work as well. All right, let us stand for prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, most kind and loving Father, we, we thank you for giving us a blessed Sabbath day. We thank you for the provision that you have made for each of us to save us so that we can have the blood of Christ over our homes, over our hearts and minds, over our body temples, so that we can be seen to be yours, so that we can have that protection that protects us from the destroying angel, even down to the very end of time, we thank you, Father God, that you have made the blood of your Son available to us and his broken body. I pray 
that as we prepare for our fellowship lunch together, that you would bless us in a mighty way, that you would bless the hands that prepared the food. And as we partake, we may enjoy a greater blessing, the blessing that comes with fellowship and friendship and friendly uh, banter. Bless us now for these things I pray in the name of your son, Yeshua the Messiah, the one we call Jesus Christ, that we say together, Amen. 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 Please be seated.